this is a sector that has gone from being really a, like a niche boutique sector to big business. Um, and I, I think in some ways the headline of that is the number of Canadians who are working in this sector has grown by 37% to the point where when we compare apples to apples, direct jobs in clean energy and direct jobs in the oil sands, we've got actually more Canadians working in clean energy. The clean energy sector, according to a new report, provides more jobs to Canadians than the oil sands. That report is out today. The report is from the Clean Energy Canada, and it found that the sector employed 23,700 people in 2012 versus 22,340 people in the oil sands. This is the first annual survey of Canada's clean energy performance. It also estimates $24 billion has been invested in renewable energy since 2009. As a result, the wind, solar, run of river, and biomass energy sectors have nearly doubled. Last year, Canada ranked seventh in the G20 in clean energy investment, up from 12th in 2012. But the report says the bulk of the investment has been made in the provinces of Ontario and Quebec, and it calls on the federal government to do more to boost the renewable energy sector across the country. Is the clean energy sector on course to be more important to Canada's economy than the oil sands? Does the government need to do anything else to encourage green energy? This on a day, by the way, oil prices are falling, and even the Alberta energy minister says Alberta's got to get off the oil train. Joining me now, from the foyer of the House of Commons, the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources, Kelly Block, the NDP's critic for Western economic diversification, Linda Duncan, Liberal National Resources critic, Jeff Regan, and Green Party leader, Elizabeth May. Good to have all of you on the program. Kelly Block, let me speak to you first. The authors of the report are calling on the federal government to give the green energy sector the same tax breaks that are given to the oil sands. Just look at what they say. This is a huge opportunity. We see growing global markets, and we need Ottawa to step up to the plate and support the sector, right? Even today, where the oil sands is clearly a mature industry, oil and gas still continues to receive federal tax breaks on the orders of hundreds of millions of dollars per year. Claire Demers on that. Uh, will the government offer this, this industry the same tax breaks or research grants given to oil sands? Well, well, Evan, our government has made unprecedented investments in clean energy, making Canada the fastest growing clean energy market in the G20 last year. These investments demonstrate that we are creating jobs, while protecting the environment and growing the economy. In fact, we've invested $325 million in Sustainable Technology Canada, to Sustainable De Development Technology Canada, to ensure that uh, research and development is happening in the clean energy sector. Okay, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to get a response on that from the Green Party le leader, Elizabeth May. Uh, you've heard the government response to this. In your view, is the government... Uh, balancing their approach with support for the oil sands and for the green energy sector. What's your view? Well, uh, Kelly's absolutely right that the, one of the things that Clean Energy Canada identified as a real winner that's currently being done by the federal government is support for Sustainable Development Technology Canada. But they could use a lot more investment. They are leveraging very effectively. But overall, no. And that's what the report says. Canada is not investing in the clean tech, green tech sector. In terms of jobs, it's already more important than the oil sands. She said it's on track to maybe someday be. Look, we're, we're getting a lot of bang for our buck when we re invest in clean tech and green tech, and it's not concentrated in any one region. It's across the country. We have immense potential. And if you look at, as the report did, what the federal and provincial governments did back in the early 90s to create the incentive to develop the oil sands, they did it by very aggressive, beneficial tax and royalty policies that helped develop the oil sands when oil was selling for less than $30 a barrel. They would never have the private sector gone in there with oil at that price and the difficulties. We created that industry, federal and provincial taxpayers. If we want to have jobs in clean tech and green tech, we need to put a price on carbon and we need to invest our tax dollars in the kinds of credits that the oil sands got to bring these investments to Canada across this country. Right, and you're, you're hearkening back to the Peter Lawhey days when he set up something called AOSTRA, which was, was absolutely about that, supporting what was then a very new and green oil sands industry. Um, let me move over to the NDP on, on this, Linda Duncan. What's your view on this, uh, given this report? that now the green energy sector creates and has created more jobs than the oil sands. 
how does government strategy have to change if it does? Well, first of all, I, I want to give kudos to Clean Energy Canada, who produced an absolutely stellar report. And I encourage everybody to take a look at it on their website. Uh, what they're doing is actually documenting what the levels of government are doing. Uh, clearly, they give a black mark to the government of Canada. Yes, indeed, Canada's moving up in the rankings within uh, Western nations, in fact, across the world, in investments in clean energy, creating jobs, but not because of the federal government and also, frankly, not because of the Alberta government. So, yes, there is private investment, even in Alberta, majorly in wind power, but it's simply smart uh, companies who are shifting over to make up for the greenhouse gases in coal-fired power or in, in the oil sands. Um, absolutely, there's a lot the federal government can do. Um, we don't see the, the clean energy or the energy efficiency sectors being taken on the trade missions overseas. We don't see Canada taking the same initiatives as the United States with China. Here, we'll help you get on board. We don't see Canada finally issuing the, uh, the greenhouse gas standard for the oil and gas sector. But, but, so there's but a lot the, the federal hand, government can do. They, they do say, uh, they, their response is one, They've reduced uh, taxes on new business by almost half from 33% to 70.5%. They believe that's an incentive. They also say that the best, most environmental and safest way of transporting energy are pipelines, which your party has not supported. What would you say in, no, in response Evan, to that? No, Evan, that's absolutely not true. We have never come out against pipelines. We have come out against the way the federal government is reviewing and approving well, to be pipelines. Fair, okay, you're against the Keystone. You're against the Northern Gateway. You've got concerns about East. You've got concerns about the Trans Mountain. These are the big pipeline projects. I think we're reflecting what a good lot of Canadians are saying, so I don't think that's any surprise. We have been very clear that we are calling for the return, as most of the opposition are, to the return to a credible review process for energy projects. And frankly, that includes for the oil sands projects. All right, uh, Jeff. Jeff Regan, uh, where are you on this, this report? Uh, is there, are there any particular strategies you think the government might implement uh, that are different than they're currently doing to help the green job, the green energy business? Evan, uh, this report is really a good news, bad news story. The, bad, the good news, pardon me, is that the clean energy sector in Canada is dynamic and it's growing. Uh, the bad news is we could be doing a much better. Uh, the fact of the matter is that it's provincial governments that have been leading the way in this, in this, this regard. And according to this report, uh, there's much more the government of Canada can be doing, where in fact uh, we are only at this stage still only 0.4% of the global clean energy market. We're lagging behind other countries uh, in terms of attracting clean energy investment. And we're lagging behind, unfortunately, according to the report, in the number of domestic companies driving innovation in this area. But there are a number of things we could be doing, the government of Canada could be doing, in partnership to get this sector moving faster. It could be doing things like creating incentives through tax treatment, infrastructure investment, and targeted research support. Okay, Kelly, Kelly Block, you're, you're listening to that. Um, obviously, the opposition party said, okay, there are some kudos, but you can do a lot more. Uh, instead, they point out to the fact that your government increasingly talked about this, quote, job-killing carbon tax, when the report actually shows a carbon tax would actually increase jobs. What do you say to that? Well, well, Evan, our government will not be introducing a job-killing carbon tax. We will not be um, creating anything that will hurt Canada's economy. Again, we are very proud that Canada boasts of one of the cleanest electricity systems here in Canada, with 79% coming from non-emitting sources. We are, we are Can proud... Can I just ask a question on this, this job-killing carbon tax? Uh, is there any demonstrable evidence that the carbon tax in Alberta has killed jobs in Alberta? Because they have one. I mean, it seems like that's a pretty good indication. Does your government have indication that you've actually killed jobs in Alberta with the price they put on carbon? On the contrary, Evan, we are very proud of the uh, job create of our job creation record. We've created 1.2 million no, jobs sorry, here no, in that's Canada not the since I'm just 2009, saying, no, no, and sorry. we've done my, that through my investments about, about in the carbon clean tax. energy does, industry. Does a carbon tax kill jobs? They've got a carbon tax in Alberta. Is there any demonstrable evidence it's killed jobs in that province or not? Again, Evan, I have, our government has been clear. We will not be introducing a carbon tax. No, no, no I, I appreciate that. I'm just trying to get at the, the rationale. If it hasn't killed jobs in Alberta, uh, and here this report says it actually might help create jobs, and the green energy sector is now creating more jobs than the oil sands, and, and your government accepts the premise, um, what would be the rationale for out of hand saying we will not put a price on carbon? 
our government has been very clear that we will not be introducing a carbon tax. Um, this is something that we believe will hurt the economy, and so we are making unprecedented investments in clean energy technology and in research and development, and we will continue to invest in those things that do create jobs. Okay, but, but just to be, I, I want everyone, I got a minute here, but uh, just one last question. But there's no, is there any evidence that the, that the carbon, the price on carbon in Alberta has killed jobs in that province? What, what's the government's view on that? Evan, our government's um, uh, view on a carbon tax has been very clear. I think you've heard it time and time again. We will not be introducing a carbon tax. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to get an answer what, to what, what I, I, that, Elizabeth may want to weigh in. Go ahead. Just saying what we now know, which we I think we knew before, Evan, is that the uh, Stephen Harper's opposition to pricing carbon is not based on evidence. It, the evidence from all economists is that we're, the jurisdictions that, and many of them around the world, have put a price on carbon. It has be, led to a stimulation of the economy through incentivizing things like green tech and clean tech and renewable energy it's actually good for an economy and that's why it's recommended now by the world bank the international energy agency and the oecd but, but to be fair elizabeth may uh, and, and there, you know in ontario the experience has been yes there's been lots of incentives to green energy but from a consumer point of view the price of electricity and energy has gone this way, not this way. What do you say to that? Oh, I'd like to answer that. <laughs> Let me tell you about the rise in the price of electricity in Alberta, where it is all through coal-fired. So that is a big myth that uh, renewable energy is well, the only well, thing that well, causes to, to, the rise okay, in the price well, of electricity. Well, to be fair, it hasn't been a myth for many Ontario consumers <laughs> who have watched the feed-in tariff Nuclear issue. Nuclear would uh, cost a lot more. <laughs> well, right. Go ahead, uh, uh, Jeff Regan, real quick, or, or Elizabeth May on that? Well, nuclear will cost more because capital costs are huge, and that's why it's not a very useful option. The point here is you can do smart policies that lead to greater energy efficiency. Canada still wastes more than half the energy we use. There are ways to create more jobs and have a healthier economy. And frankly, making sure we're not subsidizing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere is the minimum thing we should be doing. Okay, Jeffrey, I'm going to give you a, an energy haiku. <laughs> Go ahead. You got the last word. Look, the, the, the important thing is here, here that the provincial governments in this country have been taking action in this area in clean energy. It's time for the government of, of Canada to get involved, to really get moving, to make some things happen that will lead to a, a much better uptake of, of clean energy in Canada. We can do it. Let's get going. Okay. Uh, let me get something of substantive. I get that. But would, would, the, would a Liberal government cancel subsidies to the oil sands? How about that? Yes. And I, I talked already about the fact that we want to see tax treatment, we want to see infrastructure investments, we want to see targeted research support. We talked previously, okay. in, you know, in past elections about uh, cutting, cutting those subsidies. Okay, Unfortunately, he also wants the Keystone Pipeline. So we have some areas of disagreement. You got a lot of areas that <laughs> bound to happen. It happened uh, in hey, law school, too. You get, you get four <laughs> parties together, four different views, and this is why we love about democracy. We put it to the people of Canada. Kelly Block, Linda Duncan, Jeff Regan, Elizabeth May. Great to have all four of you on. I always appreciate it. Great discussions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.